These unofficial moments in our national pastime are brought to you by the official airline of Major League Baseball. United. Come fly the friendly skies. This is CBS. Next, from Channel 10 News. The president blasts the media and says he'll have the last laugh. Bill Clinton continues to point to victory, but a new poll could say otherwise. This is the sound that could save your life, but tonight there are some fire detectors that aren't doing their job. And a surfer survives a brush with death in the form of a man-eating shark. Next. Usually we support Democrats. This year we've endorsed Arn Inspector because Arn Inspector is fighting to create jobs. He's helped secure billions of dollars for road and bridge construction for Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, and all across Pennsylvania. That's not a political promise, that's a fact. And that means real jobs for Pennsylvanians. Our inspector knows that the important thing is not which party gets credit, it's getting the job done. And that's why we and a lot of other working Democrats are supporting our inspector. I was going to build a deck. These prices? Now I'm thinking gazebo too. I told the checkout lady it's marked $14. I'm only going to pay $14. She said, that's right. I got this $55 drill for 32 bucks. They say it's right. I say it's a fluke. Eckinger now has the lowest prices on the items you want most, guaranteed. Did you see my husband around here? The biggest con game of all? Ernie Priate won't sign a pledge to finish out his term as attorney general. Before he's even been re-elected, Priet is already planning to run for governor in 1994. But what else would you expect from a career politician like Ernie Priet, who spends his time headline-grabbing and grandstanding? The question is, why would we want to vote for someone who doesn't even want to finish the job? Let's not. This year, Joe Cohn, Democrat for Attorney General. WCAU-TV Philadelphia. Now, Meg Grant, Peter Barnes, Gene Crane Weather, Dave Colbert Sports. This is Channel 10 News. Hi, everybody. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Peter Barnes. And I'm Jane Robolo. Meg Grant has the evening off. In Campaign 92, polls show President Bush closing the gap between himself and Bill Clinton. Meanwhile, in Montgomery, Alabama, the president suited up for a quick game of peewee soccer and demonstrated his finesse with the ball. Then it was on to this rally where Mr. Bush admired a sign in the crowd. That's it, right over there. Annoy the media. They wouldn't know good news if it hit them in the face. Vice President Dan Quayle also campaigned down south in Florida where he warned against both stacking Congress and the presidency with Dem Democrats. And Bill Clinton is also on the campaign trail through America's heartland where he played his sax on a hay bale stage with a big red barn in the background. In Iowa, Clinton brushed off President Bush's claim that the Democrats would empty voters' Mr. wallets. Mr. Bush actually has the gall to go around telling people that they ought to watch their pocket if I get elected. The truth is, he's already picked your pocket. Vote for me, and I'll grow your income. Clinton says trickle-down economics will destroy America's farms. Ross Perot airs another 30-minute infomercial so far, the staple of his campaign. On tonight's episode, Perot let his friends and his acquaintances do the talking, like this woman, his personal assistant of 20 years. Other longtime friends gave their favor favorable opinions of Perot. Perot paid CBS nearly $1 million to carry the ad, the most he's paid for TV time. And in an effort to get out the vote for their man, even at this late date, Perot supporters opened two Delaware Valley offices, this one at Aramingo and Orthodox in Bridesburg. It opened today. Volunteers will be there to answer questions and marshal Perot supporters November the 3rd. And if you want to see the candidate in person, one of Ross Perot's first official campaign stops is right here in the Delaware Valley. The independent candidate will attend a rally in Flemington, New Jersey tomorrow. The rally is scheduled to start at noon, and Channel 10, of course, will bring you complete coverage of Ross Perot's appearance. And now for those polls. Evidence that Campaign 92 is becoming a closer race. Tonight's new numbers showing that the president may be catching up with Bill Clinton. A Times CNN poll gives Clinton 38 percent of the vote compared to 31 percent for Bush and 17 percent for Ross Perot. That gives Mr. Clinton a seven-point advantage, but that's down from the 13-point advantage a month earlier. Meanwhile, Newsweek's latest poll gives Clinton 42 percent of the vote to Bush's 30 percent and Perot's 22 percent. That survey shows Clinton lead, Clinton's lead narrowing from 15 points to 12. 
And the race for Pennsylvania's hotly contested Senate seat is tightening up. A statewide poll from the Tribune Review in western Pennsylvania shows 42 percent for Senator Arlen Specter and Democratic challenger Lynn Yackel pulls in 40 percent of those surveyed. 18 percent are undecided. The poll's 4 percent margin of error indicates the race is virtually even. And Yackel and Specter campaign is the subject of a half-hour special by Channel 10's Larry Kane. Yackel Specter close-up airs next Tuesday night at 11.30 right after the Channel 10 News. In Camden County, New Jersey, a babysitter is headed for jail because she wanted to give a toddler a taste of his own medicine. It all started when an 18-month-old boy bit another child that she was babysitting in June last year. So the babysitter bit the little boy 25 times to teach him a lesson. The bites were superficial on his arms, chest, and neck, and the boy's mother noticed the bites when she picked him up. A doctor, who would later treated the child, called the police. The babysitter pleaded guilty to charges in the incident Friday. She will be sentenced in February to a minimum six-month jail term and probation. And if you've seen this man, you're urged to call Philadelphia police immediately. This man is wanted in a daring armed robbery at a Wawa store in Atco, New Jersey, last Thursday. He's described as a white male, about five foot six, medium build, and dirty blonde hair. The holdup happened at Jackson Road and Richards Avenue. A carjacking to report tonight. It happened near Bloomingdale's and King of Prussia. Police tell us that two women were held by a lone gunman. He fled in their 1991 Lexus. The car was recovered in southwest Philadelphia. The suspect is still at large. The victims were not injured. Philadelphia police have in custody tonight two suspects in the murder of a 23-year-old man. Channel 10's Bill Baldini reports the victim's family has a sense of relief and anger in this senseless murder. Some people in this North Philadelphia neighborhood seethed with anger today when they heard the police have charged two young men who live in this area with the murder of Eric McKill. McKill was shot in the back three times last Saturday night. This is where Eric McKill's life ended at 22nd and Cambria. And the family was told that the motive may be as trivial as a minor argument and someone wanting to prove his manhood. The suspects are 19-year-old Brian Gallman and 20-year-old Xavier Van. The McKill family was told that one of these suspects actually took part in this march to protest Eric's death last Tuesday night. Eric's brother is still in shock. One of the guys were in the march. I don't know which one. The march that the march to when protest, we protest the death of your brother. The death, the black on black crime violence. And one of the suspects actually went in that march to uh, pardon? Uh, that must have fury. Uh, the way I feel, I can't say. Eric McKill and his brothers had respect for their neighbors and friends and received respect, especially from the older people in the area who watched them grow up. Any time that we would see any of them, there was always something positive about them. Uh, for this to happen, I can't understand it. I have no answer for it other than just to say it was something totally senseless and meaningless. Eric McKill was only 23 when he died for a reason that does not make sense to anyone except perhaps the trigger man. Bill Baldini, Channel 10 News. The football field becomes the battleground in the fight over proposed Catholic school closings in Philadelphia. Instead of the marching band, it was the parents that took the field in southwest Philadelphia at the halftime of West Catholic's homecoming game against Roman Catholic. The parents and the students are angry over the archdiocese plan to close eight Catholic schools. And in Hunting Park, parishioners meet to discuss the possibility of other closings. Some 15 Philadelphia Catholic churches and grammar schools are in danger because collections are down as heating and electric bills soar. The Archdiocese says it will do what it has to do. At this point, we have to focus, I think, on the parishes and the schools, what we're going to do with them. There are a number of options. Anthony Cardinal Bevilacqua will have the final say on the matter. That decision is expected sometime after the first of the year. In Channel 10's look at the world tonight, street fighting erupts in the capital of the former Soviet Republic of Tajikistan that after rebel militants seize key government buildings, including the presidential palace and the parliament. The U.S. Embassy says it will evacuate Americans if it becomes necessary. And in Moscow, this rally by thousands of communist hardliners against Russian President Boris Yeltsin about the country's worsening economic condition. Police prevented the marchers from marching on the Kremlin. Russian television reports that many smaller demonstrations are occurring across the country. 
and a visit to the Great Wall of China for the first Japanese emperor ever to step foot on Chinese soil. Both Japanese and Chinese officials hope that peaceful scenes like this will dominate the six-day visit. The Chinese government is moving to quash any demonstrations over Japanese atrocities during World War I. And when Peter and I return tonight, a story that could save your life, a warning about smoke detectors that don't work. A Philadelphia tradition means hope for families of fallen police officers and firefighters. We'll take you to this unique event. And a surfer is lucky to be alive after a hungry shark takes a bite out of his board. And this teenager is one of the hottest actors working today. Watch out, Eddie Murphy. Kenny Blank, one of Edie's people. And if you've noticed it's a little chilly, Gene Crane says it's a two-blanket night. Stay with us as the Channel 10 News continues. For every Philadelphian who's overcome long odds to celebrate a winning moment, a salute from the Lykoff Cardiovascular Institute of Hahnemann University. Every day of the year, Hahnemann treats even the most severe heart cases. And with the help of our highly skilled cardiologists and surgeons, our patients often overcome long odds to experience a winning moment that's even more satisfying than winning a championship. Discover Hahnemann Healing. When you see news, call 1-800-TIP-WCAU. Shoot it with your home video camera and call 1-800-TIP-WCAU. Has the simple joy of driving become a casualty of the times? Introducing 200 turbocharged horses. Uncanny grace. And one of the safest cars Saab has ever built. The new 9000 CSE. A car you can drive hard with your conscience intact. See your Saab dealer now for a special introductory offer on the 9000 CSE and CS. Three firemen were hurt tonight as they fought a fire in southwest Philadelphia. It happened on the 1200 block of South 49th Street. The occupants were at home, but they got out of the house safely. All three firefighters were taken to local hospitals. Two were treated and released, and one is being evalu evaluated. Some valuable advice tonight that could save your life. Check your smoke detectors. A major recall is in effect tonight. BRK Electronics is recalling 10 models that may not sound in the event of a fire. They've been installed in homes and apartments between 1988 and 1990. The brand names are BRK, Family Guard, and First Alert. Now, if you have any questions, take down this number for more information. The number is 1-800-228-2250. Once again, 1-800-228-2250. It's a tradition of love and caring, the caring and love for the children of fallen police officers and firefighters. Channel 10 Steve Levy takes us to this unique event. How many thrills can you pack into one show? Hey, you guys having a good time? Yeah! And for the kids and the adults too, games on the midway, food and carnival rides, but the rides of the Philadelphia Highway Patrol drill team were the best. They ride and people come to benefit the Hero Scholarship Fund for children of officers and firefighters killed or disabled in the line of duty. 121 have died in the line of duty since the show's inception. These fellows here on these motorcycles go out and they risk their lives every day on patrol. But this show especially, like the show to public how much they appreciate how they support the Hero Scholarship Fund. We're glad to do it. Almost 800 kids have graduated college because of the Hero Scholarship Fund, 4,000 more eligible. John Zeidler sells raffle tickets to raise money. He was three years old when his father, a police officer, was killed in the line of duty. Now he's a senior at Drexel. Without a scholarship, he couldn't have attended college. Neither could his two sisters. It's helped me tremendously. Uh, it's put my mind at ease. And um, it's just a great feeling to have uh, people like this. And now you have a good future. Right, yeah, a, a superb future. And the thrills roll on tomorrow, too. From 11 in the morning to 6 at night, and you can buy your tickets right here at the Philadelphia Civic Center. Steve Levy, Channel 10 News. And when Channel 10 News continues, we'll go backstage to the dressing room of one of Hollywood's fastest rising stars. He's one of Edie's people. And Gene Crane, a longtime star. Oh, good, morning. good morning. Yeah, it is. I said tonight it's going to be a two blanket night. It's two, two blanket morning. Two blanket morning would be more like it. Yeah, the rain's pretty well gone. Right. And the temperatures are dropping, and it's however many blankets you need, you're going to need them. I have the whole story for you in just a moment. Has the simple joy of driving become a casualty of the times? Introducing 200 turbocharged horses. Uncanny grace. 
and one of the safest cars Saab has ever built. The new 9000 CSE. A car you can drive hard with your conscience intact. See your Saab dealer now for a special introductory offer on the 9000 CSE and CS. But you can change the way you live, like serving more Dan and Fruit on the Bottom yogurt to you and your family. You see, where the world is filled with stress, Dan and is filled with calcium, <laughs> potassium, and real yogurt cultures. Where the world is relentless, Dan and is relaxing, rejuvenating. So while you can't change the world, your life is in your hands. Dan and yogurt, a very healthy habit for life. I know. Buy one, get one, one half off. That's a bogo. And this time, it's coats. Buy any coat for men, women, or kids at our already low prices and get a second coat for one half off. Foundation. But hurry, it's one week only. Bogo. Never, never, never pay full price. Marsh. Bogo, bogoing, I'm out of here. Bogo. Next month, a TV miniseries called Queen will be seen right here on Channel 10. It's the third part of the Alex Haley story. Edie Huggins was on the set in Charleston, South Carolina, and met one of the featured players in Queen. He's 13-year-old Kenny Blank. Now, his name may not be familiar to you, but chances are his face may be familiar. Kenny Blank is one of Edie's people. Spending time in makeup is commonplace to Kenny. Corny as it sounds, showbiz is his life. The Lego Maniac. Yo! Oh, oh. He's been in front of one camera or another for 10 of his 13 years. With some three dozen commercials, he's become a veteran pitch man. And there have been movies, Presumed Innocent, Carolina Skeleton, and he was Tito in The Super with Joe Pesci. And it doesn't work because you never fix the electrical in this building. It's not just being himself, it's acting, and training is a must. I wasn't spying on you. What you want to do is you want to make the audience believe that you are this character. And if all they see on the screen is a kid just saying lines and doing things, for me, it's uncomfortable. The chance to work with one of his heroes, Kenny. Eddie Murphy. Assalamu alaikum, my brother. Murphy left a lasting impression. How powerful he was, how brilliant he was, how he could take care of business, but how lovable and sweet he could be when he walks out on TV. Mom Lola, a speech pathologist and former dancer, is now Kenny's manager. His stepfather, Bob Blank, is a major recording engineer. Kenny's natural dad, a drummer's love of music, must have rubbed off. When home in Stanford, Connecticut, Kenny can usually be found at his 24-track music production studio. He plays piano, sax, synthesizer, and drums. At home, he attends public school. He's a sophomore, but on the road, he has a tutor. Do not really listen to childhood? I mean, I chose it. And I'm having a great childhood because I'm learning about the real world a lot earlier. The negatives, changing plans at the last moment, and he says the time it takes to get recognized in the business. For him, it took three years. And this is great, but when you first get out, there's a lot of rejection. And you have to deal with that, but that makes you a stronger person. I'm Edie Huggins, Channel 10 News. For him. Now, I know you have a big outdoor event tomorrow. Yes, You're the doing... AIDS walk is tomorrow. So I've been twisting Gene Crane's arm tonight. Yes. Are you going to be cold tomorrow, Jean? Am I going to be cold tomorrow? Today? You, you, do, you do well to bundle up. Today. I mean, I wouldn't go in a <laughs> polo shirt. A little sweatshirt <laughs> wouldn't hurt you. Did I say thank you for staying up with us? Thank you for staying up with us. If you want to feel better, move your clock back now. It's uh, 1233, okay? Feel better? It's not quite so late. All right, let's look at these numbers and see what we're going to expect tomorrow. High of 68 today. Where do you see the difference tomorrow? Low this morning, 45. Right now, we're at 57 degrees. Humidity, 90%. The barometer is at 29.70. And the winds have shifted now. They're going to start to chill things off. They're coming out of the northwest, and they'll be coming out of the north as well. And here's our latest satellite with the Delaware Valley right here. And this is the front that has moved through, and just about all the rain is almost finished. Those of you along the Jersey Shore, those of you in Jersey, South Jersey, We'll probably be uh, seeing some of it a little bit longer than the rest of us. Here it is, almost gone, Delaware Valley in here, and all of this rain should be out of the way within the next couple of hours so that we've got this forecast to look forward to. For tomorrow, oh, oh you know what I forgot to do? Can, can I still go back to the map? All right, let it go. All right, yeah, there's the map. 
uh, this shows you the high by tomorrow morning out of the way and these two highs will take over bringing in cold air from the north and that's why the forecast is like this now I can tell you tonight partly cloudy down to about 42 I would say about a blanket and a half Jane and then tomorrow partly sunny and windy Keep that in mind, too, and a high of only 52. 16 degrees colder than today, and watch out for that north wind. And then we warm up just a little bit as the week progresses. Mostly sunny on Monday and up to 58, and then we're at the 60 mark, and no showers until toward the end of the week. So we're starting out with a cold Sunday, but we should see a fair amount of sunshine. Good. Bundle up and have a good walk. We'll dress in layers. Okay. Thanks, Gene. Yeah, thanks, Jake. Well, as Jean just mentioned, daylight savings time is about to end, technically in 30 minutes, but if you want to, you can go ahead and set your clock back now. At 2 o'clock in the morning, it officially is over. Turn your clocks back to 1 a.m. as standard time returns. You fall back or just turn the clock back before you go to sleep, but not before we're off the air. Daylight savings time <laughs> returns the first Sunday in April, and we return even sooner than that. Don't go away. It happened branch by branch, neighborhood by neighborhood, community by community. Now, with over 550 locations, the banks of First Fidelity offer customers the largest branch network in the region. We also offer the strength of over $30 billion in assets, and we will grow stronger, neighborhood by neighborhood, community by community. The banks of First Fidelity. In their lifetimes, most Philadelphians have seen many winning moments like these. But as exciting as they are, they're no match for the winning moments seen every day by the Hahnemann University Cancer Team. At Hahnemann, we're known for taking on even the toughest cancer cases. And with our talented specialists and leading-edge treatments, we're helping many Philadelphians experience the most satisfying winning moments of all. Discover Hahnemann Healing. Channel 10 Sport, sponsored by Saturn, a different kind of company, a different kind of car. Dear Saturn team members, my name is Judith Ricewood, and I'm a third grade teacher. After reading the Time Magazine article, I decided my new car would be a Saturn. I liked the whole idea of what Saturn's about. It's one of those things I try to instill in my kids. Now to let you know who you're building that blue brain Saturn for, I'm enclosing my school picture. I'm sure if everything I've read is true, I won't be disappointed. Okay, it was an amazing finish. Right. But I wish they could have finished just a little bit early. <laughs> a, a little, little bit. bit. A little bit earlier. Well, you okay. know what? It's kind of amazing. The last five times a team like Toronto had a three-game to two lead in the World Series but had to win the final two on the road, they were not able to do it. Five times in a row, the underdog team came back to win. But tonight in Game 6 of the World Series, fourth Maldonado inning was tied at one when Candy Maldonado field. said, Sanders, see ya. Solo shot 2-1 to Toronto. In the ninth, still 2-1. to one. Runners at first and second. Otis Nixon got a base hit. Candy Maldonado tried to throw it to uh, Ted and Jane up in the front row. A little off target. Ted's a little bit to the left, right next to Jane. Anyway, tied at two. 11th inning. Runners at first and second. Dave Winfield with his first extra base hit in two World Series. Toronto had a winning record every year for 10 straight years, but this is what they've waited for. Throws to first. For the first time in history, the World Championship banner will fly north of the border. The Toronto Blue Jays are baseball's best in 1992. Toronto won it 4-3 to three and are world champions. One other note about the series that you might find interesting. Yesterday, an undercover cop arrested a guy trying to scalp tickets in a deal that he had packaged up for about $650. What that included was two upper deck seats, a hotel room with a continental breakfast for two, and eight joints of marijuana. <laughs> Needless to say, Atlanta police did not like his series special nearly as much as he did. He was arrested. The Flyers played the Montreal Canadiens tonight at the Spectrum. Bert and Ernie got out of the house and took in a Flyers game in the first period. Tied at two. Brent Fedick scored off a pass from Doug Evans. 3-2 Flyers. Sylvester Stallone, yeah, but he didn't have a statue outside. Tied at three. Still in the first. Mike Keane scored 4-3 Montreal. Flyers got behind 7-4, and the highlight was Greg Pazlowski, who got the hat trick as Montreal beat the Flyers 7-6.
In other words, Pittsburgh over New Jersey, the Islanders beat Hartford. In overtime, the Rangers beat Ottawa, Tampa Bay over Quebec, Toronto over San Jose. Those Toronto teams, I tell you. Los Angeles and Minnesota tied, and Detroit beat St. Louis. Last week when Penn State played Boston College, the Penn State defense gave up 550 yards. That's a lot of defense. I mean, a lot of yardage. It's, well, it's late, whatever. It's a lot of yardage. It's bad. In fact, it usually takes about three games for teams to get that much against the Penn State defense. Today, the Nittany Lions played West Virginia for the last time in quite a while. Penn State down 13-10 in the second, and West Virginia's Jake Kelchner went 74 yards to put West Virginia up 16-10. But Penn State's Kerry Collins threw to Troy Drayton for 67 yards here. That put Penn State up 19 to 16, and it turned out really to be about all they would need. Richie Anderson had 133 yards rushing for the Nittany Lions, as Penn State won it by 14, winning 40 to 26. Temple played Syracuse at the vet. It started and finished the same way for Temple. Lake Linhart was intercepted by Dwayne Joseph for a touchdown. Syracuse took a early 7-0 lead and never trailed. The best catch in this one was by Chris Gedney. Nice grab. Syracuse beat Temple 38-7. Villanova played UMass at UMass late in the game. UMass up 13-9. Watch this catch. Is this guy in or out? Well, check it out in slow motion. As you see, the ref said that Strawn Lumpkin was out, but you'll see that he was in. That would have won the game for Villanova. Instead, it lost 13 to 9. In other ones, Penn was a shutout winner over Brown, 38 to nothing. Delaware over Navy. Susquehanna was a winner over Widener. Delaware Valley over Lebanon Valley. Swarthmore and Dickinson tied. Ursinus shut out FDU Madison. Mansfield over Cheney. Westchester over Bloomsburg. And Rowan over Wagner. In the top 25, BYU is at number 10, Notre Dame. Third quarter, Rick Myra to Ray Griggs. A 54 yard touchdown. That put Notre Dame up 21 to 9. The officiating was so bad, though, to Lou Holtz that he took it upon himself to show them exactly what the problems were. There's one problem and another. Watch Lou here. Yeah, he grabbed the guy around like this, you see, and he yanked him down. Well, anyway, Notre Dame won it 42 to 16. Number one Miami beat Virginia Tech, and number one Washington beat Pacific. I figured that out. Third-ranked Michigan over Minnesota. Alabama beat Mississippi. Georgia over Kentucky. Nebraska over Missouri. Colorado over Kansas. Boston College over Tulane. USC beat Washington State. Penn State over West Virginia. Stanford over Oregon State. Clemson lost to NC State. No, Jane saying all. Oh. North Carolina beat uh, Georgia Tech. Florida over Louisville. Arizona over California. Kansas over Oklahoma. Virginia over William & Mary. And Mississippi State over Arkansas State. Tomorrow, the Eagles have a today. chance to get uh, today, tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I love being corrected right in the middle of things. <laughs> the Eagles have a chance today or tomorrow, whatever it is, to get on track against the Phoenix Cardinals, a team that's one in five. The only win was a 27 to 24 over Washington. Rich Kotite show will be, a Randall Cunningham show will be at 1130. Rich Kotite at noon, the game at one. And I was, well, start admitting again, I went to Penn State. <laughs> All right, yeah, now's the time. Thanks, Dave. All right. Finally tonight, a story from our miracles department. Rick Grzynski went surfing on Thursday morning right off Oahu's North Shore, 150 yards or, offshore, and he felt something tugging at his board. It wasn't a wave. He realized that a huge shark had taken a bite out of his board. The chunk floated ashore later. The 2,000-pound shark was caught. Thank yeah. goodness. Okay. Good night. Thanks That's for it for us. Can't someone pick up my phone? Carrie here. You're dead, Carrie. That package you promised never got here. This isn't Mr. Carey. This is his secretary. Please hold. <clears throat> Federal Express, I need to check on a package fast. Keep holding, please. I hear Mr. Carey down the hall. Your package Only Federal Express can confirm delivery in seconds. Other companies can take days. That package was delivered at 9.07, signed for by Mr. Hanson. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Federal Express, our most important package is yours. Not only is this Honda Accord designed to improve airflow, but cash flow as well. Introducing the Accord Lease Program. See your nearest dealer for details.
Bruce Harry Wild. Wild card lottery from the Pennsylvania lottery. With humongous jackpots of $1 million or more, and a wild card number that gives you six different ways to win. I just hit Lotto! Don't get off! Don't get me! Save me! I'm a winner! So play wild card lotto and get a lot of ways to say. I won! The answer to a burning question. What does a goat look like with no hair? And an earth-shaking new aerobics program you can try at home on You Bet Your Life. Weeknights at 7 on Channel 10. And now you can be $1,000 richer just by knowing the secret word from You Bet Your Life. $1,000 plus other prizes. Listen to me, WOGL's Don Cannon on Oldies 98.1 every morning at 740 for your chance to win. And watch You Bet Your Life weeknights at 7 on Channel 10. Sunday means football on Channel 10. Beginning at 11 with the award-winning This is the NFL. At 11.30, Channel 10 Sports presents The Randall Cunningham Show. Followed at noon by The Rich Gotite Show. At 12.30, it's CBS Sports and NFL Today. And at 1, it's time for kickoff. There's only one place to be on Sundays, because Sunday means football on Channel 10. Take a ride on the wild side with Cops Weekdays at 5 on Channel 10. From the spectacular Disney MGM Studios in Orlando, Florida, it's Ed McMahon's Star Search 93 with last week's returning champions, male vocalist champion Dave Russell, junior dance champion.